Hello everyone, in today's video, I want to talk to you about coding round for Cat Gemini 2024. So basically, people are asking me is if the coding round compulsory for analyst role, and the answer is no. Let me help you understand. If you clear this L1 round and all the remaining technical and HR, then you become eligible for the base package of 4.25. All right. Now, in this game based, after this game based aptitude round, they um, give you the eligibility list for coding round. Now, people who appear for the coding round, they have, they'll be given two questions and they'll have 45 minutes in their hands to solve these questions. Alright. In this 45 minutes, the first question would be of easy to medium level depending uh, on how much you have practiced and the second question is for sure to be a high level question if you manage to solve this first question you become eligible for the package of 5.5 if you manage to solve this second question you become eligible for the package of 7.5 now note my word eligible it doesn't guarantee you the packages I've seen people who have solved the first question but are uh, hired for the package of 4.25 itself alright now let's get started with what questions uh, appeared for me the very first question the easy level one for me was you are given an array of heights of buildings you have to calculate how many buildings you ca can see the sunset a building can see the sunset if all the buildings towards the left of it are less than its height now let's understand this question with help of an input Let's consider this input array of 3, 4, 4, 5, 2, 3. Now over here, let's understand it with visualization. 3, 4, 4, 5, 2, 3. This is a sunset. A very cute sunset. Anyways, 3 doesn't have any buildings in front of it. So it can definitely see the sunset. 4 has 3 in front of it. But since it's taller than 3, it can see the sunset as well. Now this 4 is at the same level as the previous 4. That's why it won't be able to see the sunset. This 5 is taller than 4. That's why it will be able to see the sunset. And finally this 2 and 3 is smaller than the buildings before it. This 4 as well as this 5. That's why they won't be able to see the sunset. So the output. The correct output you should give over here is the number 3. That is the number of buildings which will be able to see the sunset. Now, there are two approaches. Uh, let me explain you the brute force way first. What you can do is start a for loop from behind. Alright. Start with 3 and check all the buildings before it. If any of them are taller than 3, break from that loop. Uh, sorry, continue from that loop and move on to the next building. And repeat the process with 5, 4, 4 and 3. This will run in O of n square time. And if you solve using this approach, the chances of you getting the 5.5 package mm, minimizes a bit because this is this question is pretty easy. And for such question, if you are not able to op optimize the program, it diminishes your chances, right? Now let's uh do it in a better way, in a more uh, better time complexity. A better approach would be a temp constant. So basically what you do is you start processing from the first element, take a temporary variable. Now the initial value of the temporary variable can be set as minus one. What you can do is at each, when you reach each uh, building height, what you can do is compare the building height with the temporary variable. If the height of the building is less than temporary variable, then do nothing. Just move on to the next one. If the height of building is more than the temporary variable, then uh, add to the count of buildings that can see the sunset. And update the temporary variable value from the previous one to the new one. Right? So this way, when it comes across 3, its value gets updated to 3 and the count 
becomes from 0 to 1. Then we come to 4. 4 is greater than 3. We update this value to 4 and the count becomes 2. Now this 4 is not greater than 4. We do nothing. We move on. This 5 is greater than 4. So its temp's value becomes 5 and count's value becomes 4, the 3. 2 is not greater than 5. 3 is not greater than 5. That's the end of it. This solution runs in the time complexity of O of n. And yeah, you are able to get an accurate solution. So if you solve using such methods that use a more linear time complexity rather than exponential over here, then there are chances of you securing the 5.5 lakh package. Moving on to the second question. You are given two arrays such that you have to take elements from the first array and put it in the second array such that the cost is calculated at every such operation where the cost is maximum minus minimum of the second array. The minimum cost of inserting all the elements from the first Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is what they are expecting in the output. You are supposed to give the minimum cost of inserting all the elements from the first array to the second array. Let's understand with this with the help of example. Consider this input array 2, 5, 10, 10, 10. For this, you are supposed to give output 30. Now you'll ask me how we calculate this 13. Um, 2, 5, 10, 10, 10. And this is your uh, empty second array. Alright. Now, how do you calculate the cost? The cost is after insertion. Mini maximum minus minimum of the new second array. This one. Alright. So what we do is insert this 10 from here to here. Alright. So the cost will, cal will be calculated as 10 minus 10. Because there is only one element. So this becomes 0. Then we insert the second 10. It again, it's again 10 minus 10 which is, comes out to be 0. We insert the third 10. Again the value comes out to be 0. Finally, we insert 5. Alright. 5, comma, all the 10s over here. This, I'm writing 1 only. So, over here, now the insertion cost is 10 minus 5, which is, which comes out to be 5. And our total was before 0. So, 0 plus 5, the total is 5 so far. Next, we insert finally 2 in the array 2, 5, 10. So, our cost comes out to be maximum minus minimum, that is 8, 8 plus 5, 30. 13 is the final output. Alright, now I'm not going to waste any time of yours. I spent, I would say, an entire day finding what would be the best solution for this approach and I wasn't able to find any solution. So, feel free to post a solution for this question if you are able to find one. Uh, it would be helpful for all of us and for the viewers watching in the video as well. Anyways, um, if you want to practice for these questions, what you can do is go to lead code. And there are company-wise problems over here for the premium subscription that is. Else, you, if you want to do a general practice for it then what you can do is go to the site need code and he has this amazing roadmap if you look over here he has this amazing roadmap of topic wise um, how do I say yeah topic wise even in these topics there are patterns which occur a lot so if you complete this roadmap I'll say you have pretty good chances of solving 7.5 question as well I wasn't able to do it Hopefully you will be able to. And yeah. Best of luck. And if you want to watch videos about any other rounds. Uh, it's in playlist. That should show up over here. And yeah. Make sure to give them a watch as well. If you want to know about technical round. The essay writing round. The game based aptitude. The swear. The technical interview. It's all in the playlist up here. The timeline. And yeah, I hope this video was helpful to you. 
for more content like this make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button it motivates me a lot thanks for watching bye